Good evening, everyone. We will begin in about three minutes. Three minutes, everybody. Wait patiently. Thank you. Good evening to all of our future Wolverines. My name is Ms. Hayden, and I am the proud principal of Wellington High School. We're excited to have you join us in August. This evening, I have invited several members of our team to help you complete your course selection sheet for ninth grade. I have Ms. Julia Say, one of our ninth grade counselors, I have Mr. Brandon Farley, our other ninth grade counselor who is monitoring the chat for tonight's event. I have Ms. Marika Drucker, our ACE coordinator. Mr. Eric Wilkinson, our academy coordinator. This presentation should answer many of your questions and I hope that you find the information helpful in making your final decisions. Please pay close attention throughout if you have any questions at the end of the presentation, type them into the live chat. We'll make sure to answer them before we wrap up. So go ahead and save your questions or write them down and save them for the very end. So hold those questions. We'll take time to address them at the end. Let me go ahead and turn it over to Mrs. Say, who will get us started. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hayden. Uh, tonight's agenda, a brief review of graduation requirements, a breakdown of GPA and HPA, the revised course selection process, descriptions of some of our many course offerings, an overview of the ACE diploma and Cambridge curriculum, 
and a review of our choice and programs. Moving on to our next slide. We're going to start with graduation requirements. These are always good to keep in mind as you're going through the course selection process. In order to graduate, you need to earn 24 credits by the end of your senior year. Each semester, the grades you earn in all of your classes will be averaged together to give you a GPA. Your GPA must stay at a 2.0 or higher in order to be eligible for sports and also must be a 2.0 or higher in order to graduate. Another graduation requirement is completing a minimum of 20 community service hours. However, most of our students at Wellington earn far more than the minimum. We recommend aiming for at least 100 hours in order to be in the running for scholarships, including Bright Futures. You can earn service hours by volunteering for any nonprofit program. It's a good idea to start earning these hours as soon as you get to high school, so don't wait until you're a senior to start. You will also need to take an online course to graduate, which I'm sure all of you will be very good at after um, this situation. And please note, you must also receive a passing score on the Algebra 1 and of course exam, which is a level three or higher. And the same goes for the reading FSA, which is typically taken during your sophomore year. Now, moving on to the next slide, Rematter. These are just the minimum requirements. You are the one that was ultimately responsible for choosing wisely and always striving for excellence. In order to maximize the opportunities offered at Wellington High School and to be prepared for life after high school, we recommend that you go beyond the minimum. Moving on to the next slide, let's talk a little bit about your GPA. Grade point average, or GPA, is the unweighted cumulative average of all the grades you've earned for high school credit. This may include courses taken in middle school, such as Algebra I or Physical Science. If you took an honors high school course while still in middle school, then you already have an HPA, or an honors grade point average. This is your weighted cumulative average. Basically, this means that anytime you earn a C or higher in an honors or higher level course, you are adding to your HPA as these advanced courses come with more quality points. More of this will be explained later, so don't worry too much if it seems confusing now. Your cumulative GPA and HPA will only change twice a year. The first time is at the end of the first semester. Once you finish quarter one, quarter two, and your midterm exam, these three grades will be averaged together for each course. The second time your GPA will change is at the end of second semester. At this point, your quarter three, quarter four, and final exam grade will be averaged together for each course. While many of our students like to monitor their GPA throughout the school year, be mindful that the GPA and HPA on your official high school transcript will only reflect the semester grades that you earn. We're going to move on to the original selection sheet. On this slide, you can see the original course selection sheet that was given to you by your school counselor. We hope you had a chance to review this with your parents and teachers before schools were closed in March. This week, your teachers are recommending you for your core courses, including language arts, math, and science. You don't have to fill out any additional forms or paperwork in order for these three core classes to be selected for you. However, we do have another form that will be used for the rest of your course selection process. So let's move on to our Google form. On this slide, you can see the Google form course selection sheet, or at least a piece of it. All Wellington Landings Middle School students should have received the request to fill out this Google form for course selection. On the screen, you see a screenshot of the beginning of the form. Please note, this form is where you will select your required social studies course, your required physical education course, and your other elective courses. You will also pick alternate courses just in case you don't get your first choice. 
We have many options to choose from. So let's move on first to world languages. World languages is a great place to start. We offer levels one through college credit in French and Spanish and levels one through four of American Sign Language. Please remember, while world language courses are not required to graduate from high school, they are required to attend a four-year college or university. For the Bright Future Scholarship, two consecutive years of a language is also required. For example, if you take Spanish one, you would then need to take Spanish two in order to meet that requirement. You can't take Spanish one and then French one, or this wouldn't be consecutive. While two years of a language is the minimum requirement, Again, it's highly recommended to go beyond that minimum. Major universities want three or four years of the same language in order to be competitive during the college application process. Now let's move on to PE. On this slide, you will see that we are having every ninth grader take physical education. In order to meet your PE graduation requirement, you will take one semester of personal fitness and one semester of team sports. On your Google form, you will see this option at the top of the dropdown for your first elective choice. It's not really an option for most of you, so please be sure to sign up for this class. The only students who may skip this option are those who are taking two or more ACE courses next year because we're assuming that these students are attempting to earn the ACE Diploma Award, which will exempt them from this requirement. We'll be looking over everything you turn in, so if we notice that this part hasn't been done correctly, please don't worry, we will take care of that for you. Let's move on to social studies. <clears throat> New this year, is also a requirement for all ninth grade students to be enrolled in a social studies course. You have the choice of several interesting and challenging classes. We have world cultural geography, which is also very helpful with reading comprehension skills. We also offer a few courses that have one focus in first semester and another focus in second semester. These include Holocaust and law studies, and also African American history and hip hop as literature which is an honors course. Incoming freshmen also have the opportunity to sign up for AS Classical Studies, which is a social studies elective and part of our Cambridge curriculum. Finally, you can choose AS International History, which is also part of our ACE program and will count as your world history graduation requirement. In order to take either of these ACE courses, you must also sign up for ACE English General Paper in ninth grade. We'll go over that again later. It's a little bit confusing. For now, let's move on to your other electives. On this slide, you can see some of the many elective courses we have to offer. While you have a number of requirements to fulfill at, to graduate from Wellington, your elective courses are your chance to explore and personalize the educational experience. Some of these are academic electives, which often offer honors credit and sometimes certifications in a variety of fields. For example, our early childhood and development course is a great fit for students interested in education, psychology, sociology, and much more. It also offers industry certification, uh, a CDA, at its higher levels. Another course offering certification is digital infotech where our students are introduced to the basics of Microsoft Office Suite. There are many other courses that offer certification as well. And we also offer other courses such as culinary all the way to computer science principles. Many of these courses offer multiple levels so that students can explore them at the introductory level before continuing on in any one specific area. On the other hand, we have our performing and fine arts electives. These will not only satisfy your graduation requirement, your performing and fine arts graduation requirement, but are also a great way to get involved. At For example, if you're new to public speaking, you might want to try our speech elective. If you're interested in debate and you actually want to compete, then you can try our debate three honors course. 
band, chorus, and drama also offer various levels and subspecialties that you can join to be involved. Don't be afraid to try something new. In ninth grade, these are introductory courses, so have fun and give it a try. Our dance program has different levels and areas of focus too, from modern all the way to ballet. And finally, our visual arts program offers a variety of painting and drawing courses, as well as creative photography. Because we offer so many courses, it's really helpful to take a look at our curriculum guide. So let's move on to the next slide. And here you can see the link that will take you to our curriculum guide. Before choosing your electives, uh, we do recommend taking a look at this. You can access it on our high school website as well as through the link provided in this presentation. Each course has its own description, which can clearly help you decide which class is the best fit for you. Next, we're going to take a look at a sample schedule for a ninth grader. So on this slide, you see an example of the schedule. Your schedule probably won't look exactly like this because you have so many options, but it should have the same components, language arts, math, science, social studies, and three electives. In this example, the language arts course is ACE English General Paper. The math course is geometry honors. The science course is biology honors and the social studies course selected is AS international history. The student in this example also chose three academic electives, including Spanish, culinary, and digital infotech. Note, because this student signed up for two ACE courses, this student has not elected to take physical education, which we did talk a little bit about earlier. I want to point out how credits are earned in these courses. Students will earn one credit each year for every class that is passed with a final grade of D or higher. However, EUSC courses such as algebra, biology, and geometry will only show up on your transcript at the end of the year. Each EOC course is a full year course, and all grades are averaged in with the EOC exam at the end of the year. So while you see an NG or not graded next to geometry in the sample schedule, that doesn't mean the student is not receiving a grade. It's simply a reminder that this grade will not update until the end of the school year. Thanks so much for listening to uh, everything I had to share tonight. And at this point, I'm going to introduce Ms. Merica Drucker, our ACE coordinator. Hi, I'm Merica Drucker, the Cambridge Coordinator and Exams Officer here at Wellington High School. The Cambridge ACE Diploma Program is a college level, extremely rigorous curriculum that allows students to earn college credit through Cambridge Assessment International Education, which is a division of Cambridge University in London. Students can earn an ACE Diploma by taking seven Cambridge courses and passing the exams in a three year period. But students who choose to not complete the entire ACE Diploma Program may still take ACE classes and exams to challenge themselves without completing the whole curriculum. There is a lot of information available about the ACE Diploma and it can be really confusing. So if you have specific questions, please save them for me at the end of this presentation. You can also find answers to most of your ACE Diploma diploma program questions on our website seen on this screen at wchsace.weebly.com. And we're on Twitter at wchsace, and my email address is on the slide as well, mirica.drucker at palmbeachschools.org. So you can reach out to me personally if you prefer. We will also hold an advanced curriculum night to answer any further questions about the entire Cambridge ACE Diploma program once school is back in session. I'd now like to introduce Mr. Eric Wilkinson, who is our Academy Coordinator, to provide you information regarding our Choice and In-House Academy programs. Mr. Wilkinson? Good evening, everybody. I hope everyone's enjoying their evening. We wish we could deliver all of these uh, remarks to you in person, um, and we will look forward to seeing you in August. Um, for our Choice Academies, I just want to be uh, very clear on the procedure. All of the seats in our Fire Science, our Marketing, Equine Pre-Veterinary, and our Fine Arts Academies are spoken for for next year. Those were filled through the Choice Lottery, the same one that got a lot of you to Wellington Landings a few years ago. 
So those, those programs I do not have available seats for, but we are gonna follow up if you're one of those families affected by those programs and we're accepted. We're gonna reach out to you via email and schedule some meetings with your individual program teachers in the next few weeks. If you are interested, we do have two in-house programs that are available to any in-house Wellington High School student. That includes IT cybersecurity and drafting and communications. Um, the classes for those are, were included on the elective slide that you saw earlier, and you're welcome to email me uh, to find out more information. If you're an accepted to an academy, one other thing to be mindful of is you will not see many of the courses that are offered in those programs on your drop-down boxes on the course selection sheet. That's sort of by design to avoid confusion and disappointment. We wanna make sure that everyone can take the classes that are available to them. So over the next several weeks, I'll hand schedule anyone who is involved in our fire, marketing, equine, or fine arts program, you'll be hand scheduled into those classes um, based on your uh, interest level and all the other stuff that you turn in. So, uh, but most importantly, I just wanna make sure you know that the two programs that are in-house, we are still accepting new students for, okay? So on our next slide, um, it's very important also that you know that we are very cognizant of the fact that in 2020, the old way of rewarding kids used to be putting your, pa your like paper up on the refrigerator or getting your name in the newspaper. And we understand that's changed. So Wellington High School has a very robust, very successful social media. typing in at Wellington HSFL. We also have a website where we share information, but as the person who does a lot of those posts, I can tell you that parents and students like seeing student recognition celebrated in a public way. And we're always excited to do that with our other, with all of our teachers and all the students at Wellington High School. So thank you for taking a little time to spend with me and I'm gonna give it back to Ms. Hayden. Okay. So I hope you learned a lot. At this point, your job is to now sit with your child, go over that uh, Google form that we sent or that Ms. Bennett sent to their school email, okay? Go over that Google form and do it together, okay? I did see a question earlier in the chat about um, can you resubmit your form? Yes. If you submitted that form before today, before we had this conversation, you can go ahead and resubmit. We will absolutely take that. We can sort it and we can get your latest Google uh, form submission and make sure that we have that. Um, so you want to use your official WHS course selection sheet as a reference to go ahead and complete that Google form. Um, choose your courses wisely, guys, because this will be your schedule for ninth grade. Ninth grade is the beginning of really your future. So you want to pick these classes and pick them well. I would reach for the stars. I would start high, guys. I would not, you know, I, I would rise to the top and go, at, you know, as high of an expectation as you can for yourself and, um, and really go for it. And then let, let's see how you do. You know, um, this is extremely important. We need these Google Forms back, unfortunately, by Friday, because obviously this all got uh, pretty delayed due to the COVID-19 situation. So if you are able to work with your student and go ahead and get these Google Forms done by Friday, Friday, that would be absolutely fantastic. Just know that as soon as you submit that, we get it. We have it right away. There's, you know, and we can all pull it up at any time. All right. So if you have any questions, going on to the next slide, if you have any questions, go ahead and write down all of these um, emails. You have Brandon Farley. He is our ninth grade counselor for last names A through L. Okay, that's brandon.farley at palmbeachschools.org. We have Miss Julia Say, who was speaking with us earlier. She is our ninth grade counselor for last names M through Z. And that's julia.say at palmbeachschools.org. 
If you have any questions regarding the ACE diploma or ACE courses for your ninth grade year, go ahead and reach out to Ms. Drucker. That is M-I-E-R-K-A dot Drucker at palmbeachschools.org. And if you have any questions regarding the academies, our in-house academies, um, go ahead and reach out to Mr. Eric Wilkinson. All right. So on that note, thank you for tuning in. And I believe we are going to start answering some questions. So the first question I see is, can I resubmit my course selection sheet? Yes, do it. Absolutely. If you learned something new in this situation and you want to resubmit, go for it. Do you have to take PE if you have banned? Who would like to answer that one? I can answer that. Um, students still have to take personal fitness if they have banned, but the PE requirement depends on the level of band that you're in. So the other half credit depends. Okay, so they still have to take personal fitness, but the other half is not, does not, you don't have to take a full year of PE, just a half a year. So we will work with you if you are in band. Reach out to your counselor. Let's see, do students in the pre-vet program have to take PE? Ms. That answer that answer is going to be between uh, Ms. Drucker and I that <laughs> yes, you do, you do have to take PE if you are not intending and not declaring that you are gonna complete the ACE diploma process. Many students in the equine pre-vet program complete that as well as any kids in other academies. But if you are not certain that you are going to pursue an ACE diploma, and be looking for that exemption, I would put that in your course request for next year. Absolutely. Okay, next question. Can we take PE online? Ms. Say, would you like to answer that? Well, the, the, thing, the thing about that question is it's not just a simple answer. Um, we like to do everything on a case-by-case -case basis. The general answer is no. We do not like you to do PE online. <laughs> We are making it a requirement for all freshmen to sign up for that course next year to make sure that it's taken care of. Unfortunately, sometimes when you wait to take something online or you do it late, you end up forgetting, and we just don't want that to happen. If you do end up in the ACE program or taking enough ACE courses or completing that diploma, you'll be exempt from PE anyway and also the online requirement. So if you fall into that category where you don't think you have enough room for it or something like that, then we'll work with you individually to, uh, to make sure that it, it works for you. Great. Uh, which is higher AP or ACE? Ms. Drucker. So that's a, that's kind of a loaded question right there. AP and ACE give you the same amount of honors point average credits, and they also count for the same credits, the same number of credits at the college level. So an ACE course is going to give you three college credits and an AP course is also going to give you three college credits. Um, we actually offer a really good mix of both ACE and AP at our school. The reason that we focus on our ACE diploma program is because of the bright futures benefits. If a student qualifies for an ACE diploma, with the seven courses in the 25 month period, which is ninth, 10th and 11th grade or 10th, 11th and 12th grade, then they are exempt from the GPA requirement and the SAT, ACT requirement in order to get bright futures. So you would have the ACE diploma, which are the classes that you're taking anyhow, and you would have a possibility of getting the, um, the Bright Future Scholarship by the time you graduate with your 100 hours of community service. So the ACE and AP are the same level, but the ACE Diploma Program is what's going to give you those credits in order to be able to qualify for Bright Futures. Okay, good. Next question. If you want to do a fine art like dance or band, do you have to be in the choice program? Absolutely not. Those courses are electives on our campus. You are more than welcome to take them progressively. In fact, we encourage it. Um, let's see. If the kids in the academy programs are being done manually, do they still try to pick their classes with the online form? Yep. Let me address that really quickly. So, and just to, to accent what Ms. Hayden just said about question number about fine arts. 
there is not a single class offered in any of our fine arts classrooms that is exclusive to kids who are in the fine arts academy. Meaning, if you are the most passionate choral student, band student, you know, artist, dancer, theater major, visual arts, whatever it is that you specialize in, you can take every available course on our campus but and still not be in the Fine Arts Academy by definition. Don't worry about that. It's not a concern. The other, there's so many teachers in, the, in those programs that we have plenty of classroom available um, or seats available in the classroom to fit them. The other programs do, do have exclusive courses because we have limited faculty teaching them and limited hours per day. Okay, that's a great question though. Um, the question about being the academy schedules, if you, if you know we're going to add classes, I'm not doing your whole schedule manually because I still want to know what your preferences are for electives. So I will add the one or two classes you're taking next year onto your course selection refer um, requests, but we're, that's not a substitute for choosing the other electives that you may want to take next year. So please complete the form, and when we get them, we will update that to include the required courses that you need in those academy programs. Thanks. Can I can I add something on to that? Um, the, the way the Google form is right now, it will actually ask you if you um, have been accepted into choice. And if so, it will lead you to a different section of the form. So if you're having issues with this as you go through the form, just feel free to go to that, you know, the slide where you had the different people to contact and we'll, we'll help you through that. Either Mr. Wilkinson, Mr. Farley or myself can help you with that. So everyone is addressed on the form. Everyone should fill out the form. And the um, in-house and choice programs, all of that is addressed on there as well. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Turn off your mic. Let's see. If the kids in the academy, pro oh no, not that one. Uh, why do you have to choose two options for US history? I got that one. Uh, two options for history on, well, not for history, it's for social studies. And because in ninth grade, you're doing a social studies um, elective, and this isn't, there isn't a specific required course you need to be in for ninth grade. We're just asking that you give us a backup course, just in case maybe you sign up for Holocaust and law, and you also like African American history and hip hop and literature, and perhaps one fits your schedule and the other doesn't. That way we have a second choice. That being said, if you sign up for, for example, AS International History um, and you end up in your backup elective, we will work that out with you. If you want AS International History or, or something like that to fit into your, um, your ACE plans, we will make sure that you get that ACE class. So please don't worry about not receiving your ACE Social Studies choice. Okay. Let's see, is the EOC for Algebra 1 still required for graduation since it's been waived for those taking Algebra 1 in middle schools? Yes, it is. It is still required, and my own children are in the same boat. So anyone that is taking Algebra 1 this year, according to the state, will still have to pass the Algebra 1 EOC to graduate from high school. When we'll be offering that? I'm not 100% sure. We don't have that information yet, okay? But yes, all of the students that took Algebra 1 this year, whether it be in middle school or high school, will have to go ahead and pass that exam in order to graduate from high school. The only people that were exempt from the Algebra 1 EOC this year were the actual seniors that needed it to graduate, okay? Everyone else, it's really, it was a, you know, the choice of words should have been postponed, okay? So it will not count, though, as a grade. So in the past, it was, a, you know, Algebra 1 is considered a full-year course, and that Algebra 1 EOC was part of the grade for the course, you know, 30% of your grade. At this point, it is going to be just the requirement in order to graduate from high school, okay? Not, you'll have to get a three or higher in order to graduate. That's it. Okay. And then the next question I have is, do I need an appointment to speak with a counselor? I think, uh, you know, I did provide you with those email addresses for the counselors. If you just reach out to those counselors, they'll be more than happy. Um, as long as they're not overwhelmed, 
<laughs> to uh, set up a Google meet with you, or you guys can chat back and forth and email to answer any more specific questions. Okay. Um, let's see. Yes. And we are answering questions as they come in order. So here we go. Why do we have two options for history? Okay. We already answered that. That was just pick one and then you have a backup. Why do we do, what do we do if my child is interested in marching band? Minister Wilkinson. If you're interested in the band program, Mrs. Oser will be reaching out um, at the conclusion of this period of time we're getting through with registration to schedule um, auditions. Um, but remember, everything has slowed down and everything is in that inertia we're in right now. So normally we would do some type of audition or evaluation um, either late in the school year or early in the next school year. So choosing band, like beginning band or the marching band class, that's our first step. And then that's the one that doesn't require any audition. And that'll we'll we'll have a chance to have you sit down with Ms. Zoser and have her evaluate your skills um, later on. But to participate in the marching band activities over the summer, if we have a chance to do those, um, and you know, fingers crossed, we get to do that. Just sign up for beginning band one. And she will reach out to them if they sign up for beginning band one. Okay, perfect. If your student is taking Algebra 1 now in eighth grade and are excused from the EOC this year, will the Geometry EOC count as a graduation requirement instead? It came down from the state that, yes, that will count, okay? So if you're moving straight on to Geometry, the Geometry EOC will count, but keep in mind that next year is our last year offering the Geometry EOC, okay? So you would move on to Geometry, Yes, we're still going to go ahead and have you take that Algebra 1 EOC, you know, because we have to give every opportunity, right? So we'll have you still take that Algebra 1 EOC. And if you're in geometry and you pass the geometry EOC, that will count too, okay? So there's lots of opportunities here for our students to get that graduation requirement, all right? What about students with an IEP? As it relates to course selection, you are more than welcome to go ahead and fill out that course selection sheet. However, Ms. Pollard and um, the Wellington Landings um, ESC coordinator have been in, in, in talks and they are collaborating on um, the core classes for our, our incoming IEP students. But absolutely, go ahead and pick your electives. Ms. Pollard, our ESC coordinator, that's Suzanne Pollard, um, will be going over those specifically and she will schedule them. So if she has any questions, she does have your contact information and she'll reach out to you or you are more than welcome to reach out to her. That is Suzanne, S-U-Z-A-N-N-E dot Pollard, P-O-L-L-A-R-D at palmbeachschools.org, okay? How can I get the Google course selection form again? We are going to have Ms. Bennett, who is on the line listening, send it out one more time. You got that, Ms. Bennett? I think she does. Okay. Uh, can you please give more information about Bright Futures and how it works? Who would like to do that briefly? Okay, Ms. Say, go for it. So Bright Futures is a scholarship that um, is for students interested in attending a state university in Florida. So Bright Futures has certain requirements. Uh, there, there's two basically levels that most of our students will end up trying to achieve. One of those is the top tier, it's the Florida Academic Scholarship. The second tier is the Florida Medallion Scholarship. So these two have requirements that, that they sometimes do change slightly each year. It's according to um, congressional legislation. But for now, it's basically you have to get a certain GPA for the top one and a certain GPA for the second tier. As of right now, that's a 3.5 weighted for the top and a 3.0 weighted for the second tier. Um, you need a certain test score on the SAT or the ACT. Um, for the current class, for example, it's 1330 and 29. But there's some wiggle room with that. I won't get into it right now. But each year they set a, um, a, a score that you have to achieve. You also need service hours. So for the top one, you need 100. 
And for the second one, you need 75. Um, you need two years at least of consecutive of a world language. And that is about it. We also, there is another um, area or another option for Bright Futures that relates to our career and technical courses. So if you are interested in that, we can go into that more at a later time. But lots of opportunities for that. One thing um, I know Ms. Drucker usually touches on a lot is that if you are in the ACE curriculum and you take all seven of your ACE courses, you do not need to have the, um, the ACT or SAT score for Bright Futures. You will still need that score to get into college, though. But it is nice that you don't have to worry about a specific score for Bright Futures itself. Um, and that's available to any student who's going to be going to a school in Florida. And you'll be receiving more information about that pretty much every semester of high school. So I promise that we will continue to explain that more and more as, as you go, on, go forward. And Julia, while yeah. you're there, yeah. I'll say, okay. sorry. Um, <laughs> Can you give us, if my child is interested in taking an online course over the summer, how does that work and will it count? Um, right now, we're in a little bit of an interesting situation um, because I know a lot of people are trying to go and take more classes online. They want to get ahead. There, there's a lot of things going on with that. My recommendation is if you are taking a course online and you're currently an eighth grader, speaking with your current counselor about what exactly your, your goal is with that. Because for us, um, if you're just taking it to try and take care of your online requirement, it doesn't really make sense to do that yet because you're just, you're not sure exactly what you'll be taking in high school. There might be an online course that you want more later, or you might be exempt from the online requirement because you do the ACE program. And there's a lot of other loopholes with that. So for right now, it, it, rather than just signing up for something to take it, I would wait and uh, do touch base with your current counselor too. And if you have any specific questions about that, I know there's some case by case situations, uh, just send me an email and I can give you more information on that. Okay, great. All right, next question. If your child has two high school credit math classes completed in middle school, how many more classes do you have to complete in your actual four years of high school? Two more, three more, four more? Miss Say? Four. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Right. Okay. My child is in chorus at Wellington Landings. Wellington High School is our home school. Does she select chorus on the election sheet? Um, Mr. Wilkinson, yes, they are. They just pick chorus. And then at that point, Mr. Chase, you know, determines once everyone is in beginning chorus, he determines if anyone should move up or, or stay or what have you. So just go ahead and choose chorus. What if I am in the marching band? Do I take PE? Who wants to answer that one? We have lot we have lots of PE <laughs> questions. So maybe we can we can we can kind of synthesize a couple of different answers. Um, if you're in the marching band, that as far as I understand is satisfies PE, but I do not think that satisfies personal fitness. Ms. Say, do you want to confirm that? Because we have several questions about PE coming up. Yes. That, that is true. There, there's a number of different ways that you can get the PE requirement taken care of. Um, again, we don't want to advertise all of them here because it gets confusing. So for, for, the, for the average student, or not the average, but for the typical student filling out this form, you should sign up for PE. If you have a specific case-by-case -case question, for example, the marching band question or uh, something similar, again, don't, don't hesitate to just send an email. It's easier for us to respond to you personally about something like that. But generally speaking, marching band will take care of half of that requirement. So just half, right? Yes. Yeah. Only yeah. it will, you still will need personal fitness. Okay. And All same right. thing for like the fire academy. Like we had a question about the fire academy. You still sign up for PE because unless you, the only course that would satisfy a PE credit within the fire academy is a class that we have not started yet. Um, that you might take as a senior. So we need to get that PE requirement out of the way so you can finish out high school with as much flexibility as possible. So please, please <laughs> choose that unless you're 
to, uh, to, unless you're planning to go down the ACE diploma route. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's see, uh, is AVID still being offered as a class for the incoming freshmen? Yes, it is, but it is an application process. So if you are interested or if you want your child in AVID, go ahead and email your students, your child's future guidance counselor and let them know. I know we don't have it on our Google form, um, but it is an application process. And, you know, if, if that is something that you're interested in doing, please reach out to your guidance counselor and we'll make sure to um, get that application out to you. Okay. Um, how many ACE courses does my child have to pass to get an ACE diploma? I believe it's seven. Ms. Drucker, would you like those courses again? So you have to take seven courses in a three-year period. So they can start in ninth grade and finish in 11th, or they can start in ninth grade. And if something happens somewhere in there, then we can use their 10th, 11th, and 12th grade scores to finish that ACE diploma. Um, it does not matter if they finish in 11th or 12th grade. Both sets of students are eligible for an ACE diploma and are eligible for it to qualify them for that Bright Futures Award. So it could be either or, um, but it does have to be a three-year period that they finish those seven courses in. Now it's very doable. You don't, everybody likes to rush to try to do them in ninth grade and 10th grade. That is not necessary. Um, it is very doable in taking two, one or two in ninth grade um, two or three in 10th grade, and then the rest of them in 11th grade. And most of our students graduate from our school that are our ACE curriculum students will graduate having taken between 10 and 12 ACE courses. Now you also have to pass the exams at the end of the school year or in November, depending on when we take those exams um, because classical studies is on a different time scale. But um, it just, it, there's a lot of different options. If you check out the ACE website, the, all of your questions can be answered there, or you can email me after we're done here. Um, but right now, as incoming freshmen, you are only going to be signing up for one, two, if you're really, really, really adventurous, three ACE courses. And for every ACE course you take, you have to be signed into the English general paper class. So your English teacher is going to be putting you in that class if you qualify for it based on your performance this year and um, your previous test scores and diagnostic scores and all of the things that your your eighth grade teacher is utilizing to, for placement. Um, so, and it's, you have to be in that class in order to be in any of the other ACE classes as a ninth grader. So just right now, focus on picking those two courses, the English general paper, and then one other class, it could be a history or it could be a math, or it could be thinking skills, um, classical studies, any of those will qualify you to have that too, which means that you don't have to sign up for the PE for this ninth grade, but you can. And that's why the PE is on the list still, even if you do have the two classes. You are welcome to sign up to take personal fitness or PE um, as an ACE diploma student also. And sometimes that's good to get that out of the way too, because if you decide later on that you don't want to finish the ACE curriculum, we have a lot of 11th and 12th graders that were putting into personal fitness in the last minute. So just kind of keep that in the back of your head. Just to add on to that, I, I do caution everybody just, just to touch, you know, when you're signing up for all these ACE courses, yes, I said in the beginning, you know, you want to aim for the stars, but at the same time, we have to remember that this is a huge transition from middle to high school. It's huge. OK, and when and, and it scares me sometimes when I see some of our freshmen loaded up on those ACE courses because they are extremely rigorous. They take I mean, we're talking, you know, serious homework time, you know, so and, and, and we're talking about taking college level classes in ninth grade. OK, so. I do caution you. I want you to reach for the stars, but I also want you to enjoy your high school experience. And you have to remember, you know, when you're applying for colleges, they want to see a whole child. They want to see that you have interests and that you're, you're trying new things and that you're, you're focused on, you know, your academics, but in addition to academics, extracurriculars. Okay. I want you to enjoy your high school career and not 
just go full force after those ACE courses. You know, some of you might be looking at me like you're crazy, Miss Hayden, but I'm telling you, I've seen it a lot. Okay. So take it easy. Two classes, three at the most, but you need to, you know, experience that transition from middle to high because it is, it's huge. Okay. All right. My son received the Google Doc for science only. How does he access the other courses for Wellington High School? It should have been on a Google form that Ms. Bennett sent out. So Ms. Bennett said she was going to go ahead and send that out again. So you should be getting a Google form in your son's email, your, his school email, and you should see all the other courses. Um, are ninth graders allowed to partake in student government? The only ninth graders that are allowed to partake, if I remember correctly, the only ninth graders allowed to partake in student government are those ninth graders that run for office, mm -hmm. okay, and win. So if they, you know, the, the freshman class president, once school gets started, if a student runs for president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, all that good stuff for the freshman class, the freshman officers would be moved into the student government class, but that's it. So after ninth grade, absolutely, you can apply to be in, in student government. But the only ninth graders going into student government are those ninth grade uh, class officers. Let's see. Do IEP students need to fill out info? Who's the main contact? I gave you that information already. That's Ms. Pollard. If a student is interested in the veterinary program, what do they need to do? Okay, so two, two good questions about vet back-to-back. -back. So... You just answer those in a bunch. So if you're if you would be interested in joining the equine pre-vet program, we do accept applicants for 10th grade. Um, we do have a wait pool and a wait list for next year already. Um, and so I don't want to I don't want to give false hope that you'd be able to move into that program. We do already have enough applicants and enough accepted students to fill those seats for next year. You can always email me if you want to you know see if you get on like an, a, a backup list. Um, but I don't want to give you false hope. Those are those are tough seats to get. Um, the second is, if you want to join as a 10th grader, can you? And the answer is yes. We do have students, if they've taken biology in ninth grade and you're performing well in your math classes, that's usually a good setup to continue on. You just have to play a little bit of double up and catch up a little bit with one course. But we would absolutely take 10th graders each year to all of our choice academies if we have candidates. So. All righty. So you answered all those questions. Do they still need to do PE if student already participates in other sports out of campus? I'm going to answer that because I know in middle school that um, you can waive that requirement. Um, but unfortunately, in high school, you're still going to be held accountable for that personal fitness piece um, and for the PE piece as well, unless you are in a varsity sport on campus for two consecutive years. Um, mm -hmm. And that's only the PE, not the personal fitness. You're still being held accountable for the personal fitness. Ooh. No, I, I believe no? personal no, fitness no. too. You know, no, no. If, is if, it? If, sorry. Yeah, if you're in a, go ahead, Miss Say. If, if you are, uh, if you actually do two seasons of a sport, it's not even two years, it's two oh, seasons. Season. That will take care of the whole PE thing. You're done, you're good. There is, however, I mean, you actually have to make sure that your counselor knows that you're doing that. You can't just assume that it's taken care of. You need to let them know that you would like the waiver. So once you finish two seasons, it's good to then tell your counselor, um, can you please fill out that form for me? And all they do is have your coaches confirm it. And it's just something that we enter into our system. So it's not hard to do. But again, we have a lot of students, so if this is happening, please make sure that you're letting us know that you've completed your two seasons, and then that will take care of the entire PE requirement. But on, it has to be a school sport. It can't be a tra like a travel sport. Yes, yes, yes. It has yeah. to be, and it has to be varsity. Varsity. So you have to be, JV does not count. So varsity, it's two seasons of a varsity sport will get you through that uh, personal fitness and PE, okay? Uh, let's see, will this presentation be available to us? Absolutely. Uh, this is being recorded. And in addition to that, we will share the presentation with Ms. Bennett so that she can go ahead and send that out to you as well so that you can take your time 
as you go through it. Okay. But yes, you will be able to go back on this YouTube channel and watch the presentation again as well. It's, it is being recorded. Um, let's see, is there a specific date you have to be done with classes during the summer? I am taking during middle school. Miss Say? Um, I'm going to recommend that you email me directly about that just because I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to. Um, if you're talking about something that you started during your middle school, uh, dur during eighth grade and what your timeline is for that, I would reach out to your current counselor. But if you're talking about, um, anything else that you're considering doing in the future or signing up for, uh, just reach out to me personally. Um, so I can walk you through that because I'm not exactly sure what you're asking and I want to make sure I address your concerns. Perfect. Is AS environmental management available as an elective for ninth graders? So yes. the answer to that is yes. And we left that up to your science teacher. So as we speak, the science, math, and English teachers are uh, recommending your students for their next level class. We spent um, a lot of time with them uh, last week with our own department chairs so that your teachers knew exactly what the expectations were for each class. So the science teachers have an opportunity to go ahead and sign you up for ACE environmental as well. So if that is something that you are interested in doing and you really want to take ACE environmental management, your science teacher will sign you up for that. But that has to be in addition to biology. Okay. You should have already taken physical science honors. All right. And then next year we need you guys, you have to take biology as a ninth grader, biology honors or biology regular. If you haven't taken physical or if you already took physical science. Okay. So if you're going to take ACE environmental management, that is in addition to biology. That's not a replacement of biology is a requirement to graduate from high school. So biology, and then if you're taking that, it's in addition to. A lot of students will hold off on the ACE environmental management and take it after they've gotten that biology credit done because that, that class is also, it's pretty rigorous. You know, biology honors is a rigorous course. So it, that's a tough load to go ahead and take two science classes. But if you are up for the challenge, by all means, email your science, your current science teacher and let them know that you're interested in taking it. Okay. How can we register our child at Wellington high? Okay. We are not starting any registrations, any new registrations, um, until this summer. So more information will be posted about that on our website. So continue to follow our website or our social media and we will advertise when we will begin new registrations. If you're coming to us from Wellington Landings, you don't need to register your child. It'll just automatically roll over. All students roll over into their next high school, into their next school. So if you're scheduled to go to Palm Beach Central, you'll automatically be rolled into Palm Beach Central if you're not a choice student that was accepted with us, okay? So wherever you are supposed to go, you will roll into that school, okay? So no need for that. If you are new to the area though, and you need to register for school or you've been homeschooled or something like that, we will do new registrations this summer. Just kind of, you know, watch our website, watch our social media and you'll see, okay? And we'll put those that, that time out. Will our schedules be completed if we are accepted in a choice program? Yeah, let me talk about that for just a quick sec and combine a couple that were in there that we that we synthesized. So one, that for ninth grade, all of your courses are going to be entered for you. Um, the couple questions that came up about dance and about marketing asked, will we be placed into those classes and will be, we be able to take all of the classes that are contained in the program? The general answer is yes, but with this caveat. In the Fine Arts Academy, there are going to be courses like in dance that you have to audition for. Um, so Ms. Simmers, who's an amazing teacher, one of the best teachers of any subject on any campus in Palm Beach County, she has a repertory group that is an audition-only class that you can take in later in the day. Even if you're in the Fine Arts Academy, if you do not qualify for that class and you audition and don't earn a spot in that class, it's not guaranteed. However, you will be guaranteed the opportunity to take enough classes to meet your academy requirements. So that's that's one. 
Then another was well, how many ACE classes are included in the various academies. If you've been accepted to a choice academy, you already have a flyer um, or a list of courses that you signed up to take. The Marketing Academy has two ACE courses within it in junior and senior year, ACE Travel and Tourism and ACE Business. The Equine Pre-Veterinary Academy has one ACE class or AP class that you'll take as a junior. The other, the other science courses within that class, uh, within that program are not ACE or AP level unless you take AP Physics as a senior. Um, in the Fire Academy, you might have the opportunity, along with earning college credit for toward your fire certification. Some students also will take ACE PE by the time they are seniors. And finally, in fine arts, we do have AP music theory and a new class called ACE drama, as well as ACE options or AP options within the visual arts that you'll see as you go on. So those classes, there are no freshman classes in any of the academies that would be ACE level. Um, but a lot of ACE students also finish our academies and get the training that you get from English General Paper and the other courses like International History that you take as ninth graders. So academies and ACE diplomas work hand in hand. Okie dokie. Let's see. When do we receive our schedules when our course selection is completed? So this year is a little odd. It all really comes down to when I can get back in that building, because right now, even I'm not allowed in the building. Okay, so um, we will obviously be working on schedules in the master board throughout the entire summer. Usually, I will mail out the schedules um, probably about three weeks before school starts and then give you an opportunity in case it's wrong or if there's a hole in the schedule or something like that, I give everyone an opportunity, you know, on certain days to come in and meet with a counselor, okay, to go ahead and make any adjustments. Now, those adjustments will not be um, because you don't like which period you have something or you want to switch lunches or something like that. The only adjustments we would make are, are things that just absolutely don't make any sense whatsoever. Or if something's missing or you need something um in order to stay on track to graduate, something of that effect. So it is extremely important that you do this course selection and you do it well, okay? And you really put thought into it because most likely that's where you're going to be. And I am adamant about trying to get those schedules out to you and, and making those adjustments so that when we start school on day one, we can start teaching on day one, okay? And I'd like for you to stay put. Okay. So um, how do I know if a computer course I took in middle school counts as high school credit? Mr. Wilkinson, would you like to talk about which, which computer courses from middle school actually count for high school credit? It's a short answer. None. But <laughs> you have, you're taking classes right now that involve taking digital tools or earning digital tools. So many of you have taken like, and they're called different things at different middle schools, but if you've done sort of the pre-hash or preamble to what we do in digital infotech, you've worked with Microsoft Office and some of those applications, but you did not earn the credit or high school credit or a high school certification that we do. So those courses, we're glad you have them. We're glad that you're advanced. You may want to take AP Computer Science Principles, which is an awesome class, um, but none of those classes count for high school credit on your transcript. Um, and your online course requirement, which means that you have to do a class online. We do have courses at Wellington, including Digital Infotech, that would satisfy that online course requirement by passing the test and passing the industry certification for the course, but that is not satisfied by the work you've completed in middle school. But we're proud of you. All right. Do you recommend taking three years of a foreign language? Well, it all depends on you. If you are planning to go to a four-year a four-year university, I 100% recommend that you take three to four years of a foreign language. Absolutely, 100%. It absolutely makes you more marketable for the university uh, system, especially um, if you're if you have your sights set on UF, FSU you know, any of those really highly competitive schools, you absolutely want to do that. If you want to leave 
Florida and you want to go for an Ivy League, I mean, really, you need to make yourself competitive and you need to um, make sure that you are well-rounded. Okay. Can I get community service hours over the summer? Miss Say, do we take um, community service hours over the summer for incoming freshmen? Um, we have. Okay. In the past, but I, I would say that um, um, can you guys hear me? I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I, I would say that while we, we have taken them in the past, the, the, the issue is that right now it's very difficult for us to know what you might possibly be, you know, be doing for your, for your volunteer hours. So I, I would go ahead and hold off. Remember that you do only need, um, you need 20 to graduate, but you, even to get a hundred, think about how much time you still have to get those. Um, you can get them each summer. You can get them throughout the school year. Lots of time to do that. So I really wouldn't worry too much about trying to make the ones this summer count for that. Doesn't mean you shouldn't volunteer because the more you volunteer early, you might find you know amazing opportunities where later on you'll want to continue with that. And that is the purpose of the community service requirement is that you explore um, options and areas and, and, and meet people and network and, and learn more about what you might be interested in. So I would still say go ahead and do it. And if they count, they count. And if not, you still did something awesome for yourself. Okay, next question. What is the GPA for staying in sports? 2.0 people, 2.0. But I would hope that it's gonna be higher, a lot higher. Okay. If a student is interested in doing debate, but they have not done it in middle school, should you take speech first? Or can they just go directly into debate? They can go to, oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, sorry, I was just gonna take that one. They can go directly into debate as long as they understand that debate requires competition and that the competitions are, you know, once, once a quarter and um, they build on each other because you're going right into an honors class. So if you have a student who's not sure if they want to compete or not, and how how much they want to be involved in that, then I would suggest doing the speech class. But if they know they want to compete and they know they want to participate in it, then by all means go straight into that debate three honors class. You do not have to have previous debate experience. Okay, is there going to be a day we can tour campus? <laughs> if we can get back on campus, we will tour the campus. What we usually do in the summer right before school starts is we welcome all of our freshmen to um, what we call link crew freshman orientation. Parents, you will drop your kids off with us and they will be mentored by uh, juniors and seniors um, who are leaders on our campus. And we do lots of activities that day. They tour the campus. They learn how to use their locker. You'd be amazed sometimes how hard it is to go ahead and open that locker. You know, so we practice with the lockers. We'll, you know, we tour the campus. We do um, activities where, you know, team building activities and really just learning how to be a Wellington High School student. So if we are allowed back on campus and if all goes well, yes, you will hear about that. And yes, your students will get to tour the campus. They will, and we'll also be having another orientation later in the summer for parents to join us, okay? Where do I find, oh no, let's see, we did that one. Where do I find course descriptions? If you go to our website, you will find it under, where, where is it, Ms. Say? I mean, you go to uh, uh, parents and students, um, and then under there, you'll see courses, course information, and it's in there. It's also in this PowerPoint presentation. Um, if you, you know, just happen to review it and go back, you can see it. But uh, it's also on our school website. It is updated for the 2021 school year. Yeah, so Ms. Bennett will send out this presentation, and it is linked in this presentation. This presentation will also be placed on our website, so you'll be able to find it there as well. And if you go under, go to our website, go under students and parents, 
and then go under course offerings. You'll find all the course descriptions there. Do we rotate classes during the day or keep the same order? We keep the same order. So I know a lot of you guys enjoy that whole rotation of classes, but we have a lot of students, um, older students that end up taking uh, dual enrollment classes with the universities nearby. So, and when they sign up for a class, they have to actually leave for that class. So we can't rotate our classes. So uh, it stays in order. In the forum, there is only the social studies option and electives. Are the language arts and math sent by the middle school teachers? Yes, they are. So if you're concerned about what your middle school teacher might be signing you up for, you are welcome to reach out to your specific middle school teacher and say, you know, listen, I'd really like to take ACE general papers or I, you know, this is what I'm looking for. Um, math is pretty prescribed, you know, it really does go in order. So, um, but as far as language arts and science, you know, if you're, if you're concerned with what your teacher is signing you up for, just go ahead and reach out to them. Okay. you you have Google meets regularly with them. So you could reach out that way. Um, can we take foreign language class online? Let Eric answer this, please. Oh, I wasn't <laughs> supposed to read that. <laughs> That's all right. So I have, okay, go. <laughs> let me, let me speak to this group as a graduate of Wellington Landings Middle School way before you guys were born, as a very proud graduate of Wellington High School, and as a very proud member of the faculty at Wellington High School. We are an A-rated public school with an A-rated faculty, an A-rated staff, and an A-rated principal. Our best use for you is to allow our teachers to teach you. So when questions come up about when you're going to take classes online or if you want to take classes online, I think most of us have figured out over the last few weeks how much more difficult it is to teach real classes in a real way and with the rigor and the difficulty that your parents are expecting and also balancing all the other things we have to do. And we have extraordinary faculty members who are going above and beyond for their kids, including 60 of them who are delivering signs to their yards this week to congratulate our seniors for making it through almost their whole senior year. You may have seen that on the news. You might have heard Principal Hayden talking about it on the radio this morning. We love our faculty and staff. You will too. And despite what, despite whatever FLVS and PBS uh, VS can do, our best teachers are on our campus. So when you're asking that question, I completely understand the question, but understand that the reason why we are so highly rated and so highly respected is because the faculty on our campus. So give them a try first. Couldn't have answered that better myself. Okay. <laughs> All right. In the form. Okay. So we said that does weightlifting satisfy half credit of PE? It will satisfy half a credit of PE, but it does not satisfy that personal fitness half credit. Okay. And if you want to take weightlifting, you're taking that. So if you have to take personal fitness, we're, we're not doing PE as an a la carte thing this year okay if you're signing up for personal fitness you're also taking team sports it is a that's your course okay um we have one teacher who's teaching personal fitness and backing that up with team sports that's how that class goes if you want to take weightlifting you'll take that in addition to as a second course not backed up with personal fitness okay but yes, it does satisfy half of a PE credit if that's what you want to do. But remember, you must take personal fitness. That is that high school requirement, okay? Is FLVS Chinese part of high school or college credit? I'm thinking yes. yes. What do you think there, Miss Say? Yes, um, if you're doing a language, that, that is one, one, um, one caveat. If there is a language that you want to do that we don't offer on campus, that would be the appropriate forum for you to take that language. I have some students who, um, for example, wanted to German, and I have a student who has already completed through level three through Florida Virtual of German. And that student has three high school credits. That's her three years of a language. Accounts for everything we've discussed here tonight. So if you want to do Chinese or uh, German or any other language that uh, Florida Virtual does offer, you, you can do that. We will approve that online and um, that will count. 
Um, I just want to add to that, though, that if you do take a course online, that is in addition to your seven classes that you're taking on campus, okay? Yeah. Um, we are not taking FLBS in place of classes during the school day. If you choose to take an online course, you are taking that in addition to the seven classes you will take on campus, okay? Um, what is the level of difficulty difference between a regular class, honors class, AP, and ACE class? Ms. Drucker, you wanna jump in on that? Sure. Um, a regular class is quite often going to be our, our basic level of, of instruction, and it also will include to our inclusion students in that class as well. Um, and then an honors class is that next step up. It moves a little faster. It has a little bit more rigor. And then the AS, um, the AS, ACE, and the AP courses are going to be that highest level possible. And that's like what Ms. Hayden was talking about before. If you have a student who's looking to go to an Ivy League or is looking to go to Duke or is looking to go to um, Rice University, any of those schools, those top tier schools, University of Florida, FSU, UCF, USF, um, I want your student to be taking that highest level that we offer. Um, and all of those schools offer the ACE or accept the ACE and the AP as that highest level of rigor and achievement. Um, they are all college credit classes and the ACE cor courses, the ACE classes are accepted, the credits are accepted at over 600 schools in the United States, not just the state of Florida. At this point, Cambridge is growing so quickly that um, it is accepted at over 600 schools and there is an international recognition database that I will, once your kids get into the program and they get a little bit farther on, that we will definitely discuss that at our ACE curriculum nights that we're gonna hold on campus once we're allowed back on campus. Um, and we will definitely go over all of that with you, but that is the highest level of rigor. So there's a lot more writing. There's going to be some more reading. There's going to be more studying. It's but Cambridge. The Cambridge courses are a different. They're taught a little differently. Um, there's a focus on developing your students' ability to think outside the box, and so it's going to give them a little bit of a different feel than a traditional regular class is going to. And so it's a whole kind of different mindset, which is why we like to start with English general paper. And I'm going to go ahead and answer that English general paper question as well. Um, our English general paper class can count as your ninth grade English class. It actually counts as your ninth grade English class. So you are required to take four English classes and it will count as the, one of those English classes. So to piggyback on what Mr. Wilkinson was saying, a lot of your ACE classes are going to cover your core curriculum requirements and that is how we manage to kind of make those academies and those ACE curriculum courses work together for you and for your student. So English general paper is learning how to write properly, learning how to answer with evidence-based answers and how to reword things into your own words so you process things properly and you can put them into your own words to fully understand what it is you are digesting. Um, there is a lot of writing. There's a lot of current events. So the curriculum changes constantly. So if you have a kid who is in, who's a current freshman who's in English general paper this year, next year it's going to look totally different because they use upfront magazines. They use um, a lot of online sources. They kind of pull from all these different areas to make sure that your student has a well-rounded understanding of what's happening in the world. Because again, you have to also understand that this is an international curriculum in 160 countries. So it covers a lot of things that, um, that your students are going to be having to learn how to read and understand and write about. Um, so it's it's a little bit different. It's not the normal sitting in a class, reading a book and doing like, you know, A, B, C and D. It takes it a little bit outside the box. Oops. OK. All right. One, one quick. Sorry, Can I have my... one quick correction? I'm so sorry. 
So for the your pre IT folks at um, at Wellington Landings, I just wanted you know so that uh, Ms. Bennett and Ms. Hayden didn't get emails already. The um, the pre IT curriculum that you guys do at Landings is a little different from most middle schools. If you've completed Emerging Technologies in Business in eighth grade with the additional certification and digital tool, that does count as high, high school on uh, clock credit and your online course requirement. I apologize for misspeaking earlier. I've seen all the choice applications I saw were referencing a seventh grade course with a different a different class. Um, and so I did not know, and I apologize to your academy coordinator and your principal for not being familiar with the pre-IT academy curriculum. I'm very sorry about that. That is, that is a correction. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, apology accepted. All good. All right, is school still scheduled to start August 10th? Yes, as far as I know, yes it is. And where do I find graduation requirements for high school? Like we said before, it will it is in this presentation um, and you can also find it um, on our website, but Ms. Bennett will go ahead and send this out to you. Um, and what does the locker process look like? Um, when we start doing, um, when I call you in after you get your schedule, uh, you'll be able to start purchasing lockers uh, in the summer, okay? And, um, you know, it, it works itself out. You're going to be fine, okay? Um, and then there's just a couple more questions, though. There's, can we take, um, where was it, is... Uh, uh, is thinking skills a math credit? No, it is not. Okay? No, it is not. It is just an ACE elective. But it's and an academic elective. It looks really yes. good on, on everything. So when you're taking academic electives, those are going to look good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's good for you. Okay. And let's see. Uh and then we're actually ending our questions right now, but I am going to say that if you have all any additional questions that we didn't answer during this presentation, go ahead and send those to your future students guidance counselor. If you have ACE questions, send them to Ms. Drucker. And if you have specific academy questions, go ahead and send them to Mr. Wilkinson. As you can see, their emails are right there and I am sure that if they looked at their email right now, it is probably exploding, but it's going to be fantastic. We have a little line around here. We say, hashtag, everything's going to be great. And it is, and they will respond. We are very good about uh, communication and making sure we get back to each and every one of you, okay? So on that note, that's all I have for this evening. I hope everybody has a wonderful night.